Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel if you are new and welcome back if you are already a subscriber. In today's video, we are going to be going through my setup for October of 2023. Um, first and foremost, I would like to say I am so excited. I am already watching Halloween movies and all the spooky vibes and I am days away from leaving for my annual Halloween trip. I'm so excited. If you guys are not new to the channel, then you are probably sick of me talking about it, but I'm so excited to see my bestie space in a couple days and just gallivant all over Orlando and really just take a break. I take this trip every year. I do different things every year, but I always go to Halloween Horror Nights. This is my ninth year doing Halloween Horror Nights. I still can't believe I made it to nine. I say it every year that I very distinctly remember um, leaving the first year and thinking I would never come back and being completely and utterly to my core terrified and um, yeah still can't believe it's been nine years I can't believe it's been almost a decade but um, we're not here for that but um, I hope you guys are looking forward to spooky season as much as I am and let's just kind of dive into it so one other thing I have to address this nail has no nail polish I painted my nails yesterday afternoon and then immediately proceeded to break this fingernail and it of course ripped the polish so I've got to redo it at some point today but I also need to get this video filmed and I have so much to do over the course of this week getting ready to leave finalizing some things and making sure I don't completely short circuit myself and become useless by the weekend so let's get into it so first things first, we're going to just chat quickly about my health and fitness planner, which is a Hobonichi Weeks. I am planning to use this not just through 2023, but into 2024 and if it will have me into 2025, only because I have decided to use this little baby until the wheels fall off. Which means, because I don't always use both sides of the spread, um, an example could be like this, where I only used this side, I didn't use this side. Sometimes I will pop in a tracker of sorts. Um, things have been very busy in September, um, so there's not as much filled in, but my goal is that when I start off next year, I'm just gonna start using this side of the page if it's available. Um, I'm gonna use date covers, things of that nature, kits that I have laying around. It'll just be a really great way for me to smash my stash and just kind of use some things um, that I just need to get rid of and cover. And I'm sure I'll buy some new little treasures along the way. But the point is to kind of use what I have and also save a little bit of money. And um, I feel like that goes without saying that, you know, saving a little bit of money in the stationary world can go a long way. Um, but I don't do any setup for my health and fitness planner purely because it is for tracking purposes. I track my workouts, I track my cycle, I track my intimacy. Sometimes I create like extra little trackers like you saw on the um, right hand side, you know, that might track if I'm taking my temperature or not. It's more of like a habit tracker pop in. Sometimes I've put um, little lists in or if I need extra space to log a workout, that goes there but it's basically a place for me to jot down anything and everything regarding health and fitness if and when i feel like it there's really kind of no pressure with this i'm just trying to get more comfortable with actually keeping up with health and fitness and it has proved very useful the fact that it is small um is wonderful because it slips into my um, cross body bag very easily and can go with me to the doctor's office so that when they ask all those lovely pertinent questions um i have an answer for them and a date for them as best as i possibly can um i really recommend it if that's something that you want to get better at in 2024 or even get started with in 2023 Another thing I kind of want to address along the way um, is that I did make a very interesting decision this particular quarter. So throughout this year, I have been doing, and even last year, I think I did them um, quarterly. I think I started them. Did I start them? in December of last year or did I start them in January? Mm, irrelevant on the start date but the point is that I was doing quarterly planning videos and they were separate from 
the just general monthly video. And one thing that I want to address is that I actually have very minimal quarterly details that I'm going to show you guys. Like, I don't even think it's really existent. So we'll talk about that when we hit the Kokuyo because that's going to be the main place where they would stay um, if they did or did not exist. And I'll share my thoughts and feelings on that. One thing that I am very cognizant of is I will change up my system or try new things um, in the vessel I already have. Um, as I see fit. I don't try to keep with something for a whole year if it's not working. Um, or I try to give everything like a good solid run though. Um, and again, we'll talk about quarterly planning more when we get to the Kokuyo, but I just want to address that, you know, we're not going to have a normal quarter four video because I didn't really do quarter four planning. The reason being, I feel like I have really ignored it most of the year um obviously some goals got achieved along the way just because they did but in terms of being like actively pursuing a lot of those i really did not do a good job with that and another thing i really want to concentrate on in quarter four is really prepping content as much as i can um i really want to work on the etsy custom I really just kind of want to make it through the holiday season without getting totally out of the frame with budget issues. Um, I think it goes without saying that, you know, everything is a little tight for everybody these days and Christmas is only going to kind of constrict that a little bit more. So I really don't want to put any like massive financial goals on myself other than just getting through the year. I have a lot of big trips I would like to go on next year. So, um, really concentrating on just staying on budget. And I think that if I kind of keep that mantra of, um, work on the custom, work on content, stay on budget, maybe clean up some of the goals and tasks throughout the year. I've also kind of put that in my brain. So I really, again, I really didn't want to make a list. I'd really just like to kind of walk back through the last three quarters and see what goals I can accomplish by the end of the year without creating a massive to-do list and freaking myself out. Again, I think it goes without saying that this can be a very busy time, a very emotional time, a very full time of year for people. I'm a huge fall person. So if I am available to do so. I am trying to hike. I'm trying to go do fall activities. I'm trying to also be an invalid and craft and create content and watch movies and just cozy up and kind of hermit a little bit um, and restore and reflect and get ready for a new year. It's really like my, it truly is my favorite time of year. But um, I just wanted to, like I said, address kind of the quarterly thing. I'm kind of throwing that out for quarter four. And I cannot tell you the amount of relief that I feel um, going into my favorite time of year by just saying, hey, just walk yourself back, restore yourself, knock out what you can, stay on track. Like really just super simple, dulling it down instead of a big long list of goals like, categorized and broken down, which again, we'll talk about when we get to the Kokio. But the very quick thing that I do want to show you my budget planner, because very much like the health and fitness, I don't do anything prep wise. So the only thing that really happens is that I make sure I have expense tracker sheets for every week of that month. Um, and then I started this, I think, I think, did I start in August? I did. So starting in August, I started to make a list of all of the things that could have a balance at some point. Um, I just kind of make a big long list. And then from there, um, something new I did adapt for October is separating between like the checks, which is funny because really it's pretty simple. One check takes care of bills. One check takes care of rent. Um, 
And that's just kind of how I flip flop it throughout the month. And then I did create a little separate category down at the bottom. Jeff's birthday is in October. So obviously any gift money that I'm gonna be using is gonna be to go towards a birthday present. And then I do wanna start working on my mom's Christmas presents because I don't know what they are yet. My mom is a little bit difficult to shop for because she kind of has a little bit of everything. I try not to get her too much stuff and more things she can actually use or experience. Um, I'm really shying away the last couple of years from things unless they're specifically asked for. Um, I'm trying to give people experiences so that they can have really great memories or um, useful items, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm really focused on that in October because again, she is very difficult to shop for. So once I get her out of the way, then I can concentrate on other people and things of that nature. Um, this has worked out really well. I used to keep a list separated out by check in the back of my Kokuyo in my idea section. And again, I did quit doing that because I would like to keep all budgeting here. So um, in a separate place, and just kind of continue to get used to this. Um, so that is my plan for my budget planner. And this is a Happy Planner Skinny. This is from a few years ago. Um, is it a few? It was a 2022 to 2023 edition. Um, what I will most likely do is just keep this. I don't have any intention of changing it. I don't really use the calendars or anything. So it's just gonna be super easy for me to keep all the labels, take out all the other information and keep it going. I have these lovely envelopes in the back where I am trying to cash stuff. Um, I am hoping to reattempt that in 2024 more successfully now that I have learned that I do have to prep a good bit in advance. Um, and I've pretty well thought out how that's gonna work and happen. So hopefully that'll come to fruition as I see it and I will be better about budgeting next year. Um, I definitely feel like I have some months that are better than others. I can honestly tell you September has been very hard um, in terms of budget, in terms of fitness, in terms of all the things. I just really am, I feel like I'm very behind. I feel very overwhelmed. Um, I could not be taking this trip soon enough. Um, I always come back very tired, but very fulfilled. Like my cup is completely overflowing with just all the good emotion typically. Um, and I am just ready to conquer fall when I get back. And it's always super great because I kind of leave and it's on the warmer side of things. And then I come back and it's like full blown fall when I get back, it's ready for me. It's had time to like fluctuate a little bit and we're rolling into it. So there's that too. So without further ado, what you guys are probably more excited for than anything is the Kokuyo October flip. So first things first, we're going to go through the tracker page. So I used this super cute little washi from Every Minute of Story. I did get it from an Etsy seller. Um, I will put that information down below. It's like a swatch set and it's already packed away into is it packed away I think it is already packed away into my washi box but um it was just a sample that I had I wish I had more of it I can honestly tell you that I have more October washies and Christmas washies and I don't know my Valentine's collection isn't that big but I do love a good Valentine's washi um I have a very large collection of Halloween in October, but I kind of think that's a normal thing. Um, so it's very hard for me to pick out basically five washies, five, six washies to use um, for the month. It's so hard. Um, so I'm very excited about having daily pages again because I can kind of use a little bit more. Um, but because this was new and super cute and fit perfect, um, there is like a little bit of overlap, just a little bit, but I really don't think it's going to be noticeable for the next like three months. I think we'll make do, um, but it's super cute and I love it. Um, I don't even remember what collection it's called, but like I said, I'll put the seller and, um, try to link it if it's still available. 
um, but she's got quite a few and she's based out of Glasgow. Is she Glasgow or she might be in the UK? She's in the UK somewhere. Um, as far as goals, so we have wake up at five. That's hanging out. I will fully admit to the fact that I have not been waking up at five lately. I have even taken to turning off my alarm entirely to try to catch up on some sleep and be restorative. This is probably the least stuffy I've sounded in a week. Um, which is amazing considering I spent the whole day outside yesterday. Um, but I'm not nearly as congested as I have been and I could not be more grateful that it's finally letting up fall allergies, ragweed, barometric pressure changes, definitely taking its toll on me um, between the Tennessee trip and coming home. Um, as far as working out, I definitely hope to get back to working out when I get back from the trip. Um, I'm going to do what I can in between now and then, but it is, it's been very hard for me to get back on track um, and stay on track. I was doing pretty well, then went on the trip with my mom and pretty much came back not feeling well and getting back into the swing of things with work. But I'm hoping that because... Um, my boss is away at conference this week, so I'm hoping to get back on track a little bit. And then whenever I come back, um, I'll have a few good days, like a long weekend over Columbus weekend to rest up, try to get back in the swing of things as well. Um, so I'm very, I'm a lot more optimistic about October. Um, 12,000 steps is still my step goal. Calorie deficit will remain, um, 64 ounces of water. Again, these are goals that I have every single month um, that don't change. I am looking to get back into logging my mood and energy. I kind of fell off with that. Supplements are also getting its own tracker bar yet again, even though I've not been doing so well. And I feel like it's been a while since I've said this, but I am a very big advocate for using tracker pages to actually track. So it's not necessarily about hitting 100%, it's to see how often that you do something. You are habit tracking um, to see what your habits are, to see how often you do something or you don't do something, like if it's a no spend situation. So um, just kind of have grace with yourself and keep that in mind. Um, as far as my 10 minute project, I feel like I've talked about this before, but just in, I know I have, but just in case you're new to the channel, um, I call a 10 minute project, just that a 10 minute project. So, you know, all those like really big projects hanging out around your house, be it cleaning out the closet, uh, Oh goodness, what else are some big ones that I have? I have ones for work as well. So right now it is doing some digital filing and completing digital workflows that have just backed up that are super easy, but, or it could be cleaning out your email, both personal and professional. It could be sorting through mail, um, like old ma mail that you need to shred maybe, like you've kept statements for years, stuff like that. It's like those bigger projects that really, are on fire, but you would like to make some progress for them. You just can't seem to ever find the time. I will give you a pro tip. If you have a podcast that you really like, pop that on. And there's no pressure to go more than 10 minutes. Um, obviously you can just put on a playlist and dance around and, um, do your task. I like a good podcast. If I have the margin for it because it means I'll probably dedicate about an hour. There have been times that I've gone over that. Um, so it's been really successful. Um, the problem is that I have not had a ton of spare time or spare energy to really give to it over the last month or two. So I'm hoping that October will give me some time. Um, I know I keep saying, it sounds weird for me to say, oh, I hope I have time for this. I hope I have time for this. I'm getting back on the horse with this. But then in the same breath saying, oh, it's super busy in quarter four. One thing that is very present in quarter four and even going into quarter one a little bit, very minimally, is that Jeff hunts. Jeff is my partner. Um... He is a conservationist style hunter. That basically means that he's not out there shooting everything and anything. He is out there hunting specifically to fill the freezer. Um, so please don't come at me in the comments or go completely bananas. If you wanna talk about it, you know, in a private platform or through uh, 
direct messaging, I'm happy to do that, but please don't blow up my comments or go crazy. Um, we're not, you know, and I do have a rule, no baby snow bunnies. <laughs> Um, and he adheres to it comically because he would never do that. Bunnies, because I have, my mom had, my mom has bunnies. I had a bunny. So <laughs> that's just kind of a funny rule in the house. Um, and then obviously he is going for, um, deer more specifically that have reached maturity. And, um, he, he is definitely just not out there shooting anything and everything. I just want to preface that. Um, and he supports many conservationist organizations and does shop even very, I don't, I don't know that holistically is the right word, but conservationally, he is very into preservation. He is very into, um, working with companies or purchasing from companies that care about conservation. So just to like throw out everything that, you know, it, hunting is not a one size fit all kind of thing. I just want to preface that, but because he is away most weekends, that really does give me a lot of free time, whether I want to use that time to content create, work out, clean, uh, go to farm festival type of things. Like it really does free up a lot of time for me. And, um, it's really the most wonderful time of the year for both of us because we are very much fall hobby people. So, um, yeah, just to clarify why I'm like, oh, it's super busy, but also I have a lot of time. That was a very big side tangent. Um, reading, has been very lax over the last couple months. I'm hoping to get back into that. Working through my Hobonichi five year, again, working on Project Life. Content creation is definitely the name of the game and Etsy Custom also being roped into that. Basically crafting, I call it three Cs, crafting, cleaning, cooking. That's pretty much my mantra in life. Like if I could like put that on my door, I would, um, I should, but that's pretty much just my motto um, in Disney. <laughs> So crafting, cleaning, um, cooking is just really what I plan to do over the next couple months and really restore and enjoy the season for sure. So that pretty much takes care of our habit tracker. Flipping over to the monthly spread. I actually, do I have, I should have them out just want to make sure I try to give the most accurate numbers that I can. So I used the Hobonichi monthly kit from Coffee Monster Co. She has not come out with the ones for 2024. This kit and all of the ones I've used this year are from 2022. I just liked them more than the 2023. She did like a food theme. And while I love food and am a foodie and did purchase the kits, I do like a more themed look personally. I don't know that I'll be buying, I say that I don't know if I'll be buying 2024, 2022, 2021, whatever um, kits. Okay, I don't think she did them for 2021, but I don't know what 2024 kits I'm gonna do yet. I haven't made it that far, um, but I do like a theme. It just seems to work better for me. And some are like fall style, some are springy. Um, and I just like that. I like when they kind of make sense, but I can totally see where from a worldwide concept that could be a problem for a creator because not everybody gets the same climate all year round. You may have the opposite. Um, so she's just trying to make it more accessible to anybody, everybody, no matter where you are. So I think that's really awesome of her for sure. So I really don't know what my choice is going to be. I've even kind of contemplated not buying a kit at all um, and just maybe using things in my stash and kind of custom creating some things. So we'll see what happens. Um, I did change things up a bit. So normally I would use the side tracker bar for um, tasks, but as you can see, I really struggle with that task list. And it's because one, I'm not really looking at it on a weekly basis. Two, I am really crap at using like a weekly list. So again, going back to, I'm kind of cutting down on the quarter four planning or cutting it out almost completely for right now, 
Um, and that's not to say that it won't make a reprise in 2024. And I already, I guess that's kind of where my mindset has shifted. It's like, let's use quarter four to clean up the rest of the year and see what we can get done. And I know I keep saying that and it's a little redundant, but it's also to give me the space and grace to start planning for quarter one of next year, which I'm really excited to get into. And I, I have felt that excitement for about a month now. And I knew planning for quarter four just really wasn't going to have a point. I knew what I wanted to achieve. I knew I wanted to work on content. I knew I wanted to work on staying on budget. I know I want to work on some larger cleaning projects. So, and the Etsy custom and things like that. Like I really just wanted to hammer into those and I didn't want to get stuck in the weeds of other tasks. So I opted to use this sidebar as a cleaning list. I really like how this turned out. I really, really like how this turned out. So I used a Tombow marker specifically. I used 026, which is kind of like a deeper gold mustard yellow. And then for my little YouTube icons, I used 062, which is just a really pale yellow. I'm just playing off these like kind of yellow stars because I'll obviously write in black ink. So I've got the kind of black and gray motif going. I will use a gray Tombow. I haven't picked a color to mark in any other content I post. So if I post something to Instagram or Facebook or whatever, I will mark it here. Another thing that I did change up this year is that I don't write down what the video is until I've posted it in that place. Um, I used to plan it out and then it would just get messy and then I would try to go and look and be like is there a video did I do my upload what's happening now I can see it like I can flip to this page and say okay cool I've posted for this Sunday this Wednesday this whatever you know this is now I need to make sure I film for the 8th or maybe I've got a plan with me scheduled for the 18th, but I'm not filming it until this week. Like it really did give me more structure and allow me to see farther in advance what was actually put. It was more efficient is really what it was um, because I can plan the videos as much as I want to. And then if I randomly get an order in from Coffee Monster Co., that I didn't know when it was going to arrive, then I'm shuffling and moving things around willy nilly because I'm trying to make room for that and also make the most of my content creation. So this system has been working out a lot better. Um, obviously mistakes have been made and I've had to kind of like switch some things around, but still it's so much cleaner than it used to be. And really when I am planning. I like my planner to be as neat as possible. Obviously things happen and you have to move things around and it can get a bit messy, messy, but more or less, I really do focus on, um, making sure that I try to keep this a little bit cleaner and I'm constantly reviewing myself for areas to improve efficiency. Um, so that's why it's blank other than the YouTube icons themselves. Again, my cleaning list is obviously um, just kind of s closing this monthly circle out. I'm really excited about having the cleaning tracker here. I think it'll help tremendously to not have it in the back. And um, again, I'm just working on slowly condensing things or expanding them into their proper places. So kind of trying to do away with having like this spare book back here. Not that it doesn't have a purpose some days, but definitely just trying to find the right home. And I feel like that's constantly evolving and changing. And the more that you're reviewing yourself and saying, oh, it doesn't have to stay like this for 12 months, the better off you're going to be like constantly saying, okay, is this working? Is it not working? Why? Let's try this. So um, again, big advocate for efficiency. Okay, now we're going to get right into it. So I definitely know that I did not have this super cute, beautiful reading and resting washi when I filmed my September flip through, upload, whatever. And even though it would have been a setup, September setup video, 
just to be technical. Um, I was waiting for it to get here. I knew it was going to get here in time. Um, I do find it extra comical that this particular week is, uh, there's going to be some resting and there probably won't be a whole lot of reading, but it definitely is that fall vibe. And I really wanted to have something to set the tone of basically the first full week of fall. Um, the autumn equinox has officially happened. So I really just wanted to dive right in and just do like a kind of fall color palette here. Um, <laughs> the funny part is I'm driving all day this day and then I am having brunch and going to Halloween Horror Nights on Sunday. So I really like that last year I kind of had like the spooky beans up at the top and I had done kind of like a swatch style spread and I am long overdue for a rainbow spread and completely see that that's going to have to happen in September or not September, November. Um, and I'm really excited about it, but I did want to show you guys because even though it's technically 99.2% September that week, I know that I didn't have that washi and I am not going to be doing a plan with me for this particular week because there's so much going on to get ready and I just want to keep my head in the game and create some other content during this week but you will see this spread again because I do have an idea for a video that will show it again and then obviously you'll see it again in the wrap-up video for um September so all in all you'll see it again I just wanted to give it its moment in the sunshine I am so excited about this washi. Oh, pausing really quick before I dive into my obsession of this washi. Um, I do want to say that I do not, <laughs> I don't pre-plan anything in my setups anymore because things get moved so much. And I've been like that for a couple years now. So all I really plan is washi. And that's such a little delightful joy. And then every once in a while, I will leave a blank just because I'm like, I'm so indecisive and I can't pick one. I'm just going to leave this blank and I'll pick one that week and give myself a treat. Because sometimes it is kind of annoying when I get about 10 days into the month and I'm like, man, I kind of wish I hadn't planned all the weeks or there's a washi I forgot about or something like that. So I do try to leave myself like a little bit of room sometimes, but back to the excitement of this washi. This washi is not from the 2023 um, releases that No White Space stickers did. It is, I think from last year. It is of Minnie, Clarabelle, and Daisy dressed up as the Sanderson sisters. I went back and forth so many times about what washi I wanted to use this week. And I really wanted to even use, I still have this on my desk, um, the Sweet Monsters kit. Like I was going to kind of use this. And in all honesty, I still could. I could like put the, put it down at the bottom and it would still match really, really well. And I think that was the problem I kept running into um, because really I feel like this is such the vibe of this week, of this particular week, um, is just like really getting into the Halloween spirit of things. And um, it's so girly and so cute. And I have a mini kit for it as well. So I had plenty and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't decide what to do. And then the more I thought about it, I really realized that a majority of this particular week, even though I am in Orlando and we are actually, we're in Universal more than any other place, but we're doing a lot of like Disney resort crawling and exploring and things. And I, and we're trying out different restaurants and things like that. So I really wanted to use Sweet Monsters because it wasn't so heavy on the Orlando theme. But then I was like, it's Orlando themed. Like this is your week. And then on top of that, they are going to have Clarabelle, Minnie, and Daisy dressed up as the Sanderson sisters on a parade float at the Booty You Parade. So, and I am dressing up as Winifred. So, all signs pointed to this was, this was the washi that I needed to use. But the problem is I don't have a lot of it. I only have a sample of it. So, 
I treated myself to not hoarding and to using my washi. So here is your public service announcement. Here is all the permission that you need to go in your stash and use your cute Halloween washi that you hoard because you only have a sample of it. Um, and I have absolutely no regrets. I still think that it matches so well. Like I can use some of the gray. I can use some of the orange. I can totally not use this kit at all for this week. Um, I really love these little ghosts. I'm not going to lie. It's a huge reason I bought it. Um, I can still use like some of the really cute boxes and things like that. So I'm not disappointed at all. I'm really excited to see what I do with this kit um, or not with this kit, but with this like as the theme. So very pumped about that. Um, and it is the same seller, I think, as the one I got my, yeah, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's the same seller that I got from, got the Every Minute of Story Washi from, so I'll make sure to put that in the description. Just to kind of, I tried to do my best and alternate between kind of like neutral, bright, neutral, etc. This washi is from Crate Paper. It is from many, 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 many collect, or is it from Pebbles? Ooh, I think it's from Pebbles actually. And it's one, of, it is probably one of my top five um, Halloween washies because it's floral, which I love. And it's just so cute. And if you look really close, there's like little bats in the pattern. There's candy corn, there's cobwebs. It's super cute. Um, so I loved that. And again, treated myself to not hoarding it. I left myself a little post-it on this one. This is Sweet Monsters. As I said before, I really want to use this kit at some point in the month. I think that this is a really great space for it. However, going back to what I said before, sometimes I get going in the month and then I remember this one washi or this one kit that's just so adorable and I can't believe I forgot about it, but I have no space for it. I have already filled all my weeks up, so I did leave myself some space. I do feel fairly confident that Sweet Monsters is going to take it because it's so cute and I specifically ordered it for October and I've really been looking forward to it. I do have one washi that is a very strong contender from Every Minute a Story and then on top of that I did treat myself to the Harry Potter washi release that Every Minute a Story did. Um, everyone can calm down. I am not leaving Coffee Monster Co and I am not becoming a Every Minute a Story every release convert. Um, there are just things in this world that I cannot resist and it is Harry Potter and Star Wars and Disney themed. And I do know she's done other Disney themed things in the past, but um, I really felt confident that I could get in on this particular sale because I just had the margin for it and I did make it. I got what I needed and got out for not a million dollars, which was great. I actually made it out under 50, which also really great. I made it, did I make it under 40? Pretty sure I did. It was a very quick in and out purchase um, with just some like cute um, accessory kit. Like I think I got the kit, some stickers, etc. So I might change my mind and do Harry Potter this week. Highly unlikely because Harry Potter for me is year round. So I really don't feel a need to use an October spread. I really feel strongly it's going to be sweet monsters. And I almost skipped a whole spread. This is the last full week of October. Um, and even though I am slated to currently be back in the mountains on Saturday and Sunday of that particular weekend, I had to give the cozy Halloween washi from Coffee Monster Co. its own week, its own moment. It is going to show up again here in a minute when we talk about quarter four planning again. Um, but I really, really, really love it. There's like little skeletons and it's like this like super sparkly um, kind of glitter hollow, which I love. Um, I just think it's super duper cute and I will be using it with the cozy Halloween, um, kits that I have from last year. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, that will be lovely. Last but not least, I did think that the most appropriate, and I don't know, I kind of had like minimal regrets over this. So this washi is from Villa Beautiful. It's 
is from the collaboration that they did with Magical Plants. I subscribed to her on Patreon for a while and we'll probably go back to her at some point. But I just love her journals, her aesthetic, super pretty. Um, and this seemed to be a perfect week for it because not only is it Samhain slash Halloween slash All Hallows Eve, it is also Day of the Dead. Um, Dia de los Muertos, same thing. Um, all of that goodness. And it is the time that I will really be feeling those like super witchy vibes um, and really into um, kind of the spiritual work of the season. And so I really wanted to use that her washi to kind of highlight that. And I do have kit and product that matches that I'll be using that week as well. So again, there's not a whole lot of pre-planning that's done anymore because I am, I like to track in real time versus pre-plan too much. Um, as far as work goes, lots of things are pre-planned, but um, that's all my work, Google Calendar, and that's where that all lives. But again, for the most part, I like having it as clean as possible so that it doesn't get messy. I like efficiency and if I happen to have like an appointment or a trip, first of all, my brain is amazing and can remember all of that stuff, which I will forever be indebted to it for. But like, say there's like a party, like actually, I do know there's a party. Um, I would say more of an appointment. That would be something that I would might be apt to forget. If I have a doctor's appointment, I will just stick a post-it note in that particular week and with the date and time, or I might even use like, one of these little things and stick it on the day so that when I get to that week, I know it's there, but I haven't like stuck a sticker down. And that way, if it changes or it moves, all I have to do is pick it up. I will also say in advance, because this happened last year and I feel like it's happened in the past. I have a tendency for if I write it down in pen on the actual paper, something's gonna happen to it. And you think I'm kidding, but more often than not, if I do that, something happens. If I don't, nothing happens. It's really bizarre. I think it's just kind of like the, oh, sorry, that was my watch. <laughs> but, um, and it did scare me. But uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but it's like literally the second that it's officially down in pin on the planner, something's gonna happen. And last year it happened in a really big way regarding the annual trip. So I'm definitely not trying to jinx it this year, but. That's that. So that covers that, but I do want to show, even though I'm not doing quarterly planning, like I normally would, like breaking down my checks, or I would even do that in the course. Normally I do it over the course of a quarter. I would break down checks. I would have goals. I would rewrite my expense list. I would redo my debt snowball, all these things. But the, again, the more I thought about it, I was like, I'm not, nothing's really changing. Like my expense list isn't going to change. My like when everything's due, it's not gonna change in the next quarter. Why are we rewriting this and wasting time? My debt snowball situation is not gonna come down or change. Like the main goal is just start saving and stuffing cash envelopes and stay on track. And you know, I don't have any like, it's really just a stay on track thing. Um, I'm not, I don't have a pay off three debt situation and that would be really difficult with Christmas on the horizon. So why am I rewriting this? And then I really wanted my checks to be with the budget planner. So check planning is now in the budget planner where it needs to be. Um, the cleaning list has moved to the monthly planner spread because I wasn't using the sidebars. Like everything is kind of just like moving and finding its place. So I really didn't need anything like I wasn't there wasn't a big need to do like a whole separate video for quarter planning but <laughs> I do love a good watch list and I would also like to preface that no I am not going to genuinely attempt to watch all of these I cannot believe this I am not gonna try to watch all of these in a month a lot and you'll see x's in some places for things I've already watched and I will go ahead and say and I did it for a the Christmas one last year, I make sure to leave lots of room because some of these will get rewatched. Like I will definitely rewatch Hocus Pocus. Um, <laughs> and then some of the other things are like full blown series, like Haunting of Hill House, um, Resident Evil series. This is like the Halloween breakdown um, of all the micro Michael Meyer movies. Um, so it's in various state, like Charmed. I'm not gonna binge all of Charmed. Like I don't have that kind of time. The main reason that I do a watch list is so that whenever I'm like, mm, 
I want to watch a Halloween thing, but I don't know what I want to watch. And my brain just like bloop blanks out. It's like I can only remember five Halloween movies and I'm just like, why? But this list is really great because I've got a kind of smattering of movie series, TV series. There's kind of like cute and fluffy. There's old movies, there's new movies, there's Disney stuff, there's Universal stuff, there's everything. Um, if you have a movie series, Halloween spooky thing that you recommend. Oh, I just thought of one that's not on here that I have thought about several times over the last couple weeks. And then I remembered another because I haven't watched it yet either. Um, Tower of Terror is not on the list and I did buy it on DVD while I was in Disney last year. Right after I got off of Tower of Terror, I ordered it on Amazon so that it would be there when I got home. <laughs> and then um, I wanna watch Teen Witch. But the point is that I do create a watch list specifically just to have kind of like um, an index as it were. And then after this year, I do think I'm gonna curb it a little bit because there's some in here that I just do not wholeheartedly agree with. Like I don't see how Shrek is a Halloween movie. Please explain that to me. I don't see how Train Your Dragon is a Halloween movie either, but it's on some list that I looked at super bizarre. Um, what's in the hook was on a list somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, super weird. Not a fan of some of them. I just, I, and I probably won't watch them this season either. Um, and obviously the list is ever expanding, but if you have a, a movie that you recommend or that's your favorite, I would love to know. Um, obviously it's taken up a lot of space and I could keep going. I did want to leave space for your recommendations. If you look really close, you can also see where I've whited out in a couple places that I need to fix. So I didn't finish Pet Cemetery because I accidentally put a C instead of an S. Don't blame me, blame the coffee that hadn't kicked in. Um, last but not least is this lovely kind of gift page. Nobody on this list watches these videos. I feel pretty confident that it's fine to like showcase this. Um, I have really curbed down my Christmas list for this year in terms of who I'm shopping for. And that is just basically out of necessity. If I end up finishing early and having the margin and can do a couple things, I do have an extras and ideas section um, to get people some frozen pies from my favorite pie shop. And they have an absolutely wonderful chicken, pot, rosemary chicken pot pie that they keep and they have like small ones. So I often, if I can, get some of the small and the large and just gift them to people. Um, who are, or maybe like a family as like a family gift. Um, cause it's super useful. They will eat it. It is a crack in case of emergency thing and it is extra delicious. So absolutely no regrets there. Um, but I used obviously the Halloween washi for the watch list. I used my Tombow to hand letter that out as well as that. I really love how that turned out super clean, um, or just kind of sketchy funky. I really like that as opposed to like the stamping that I've done. Um, in the past or like the kind of bouncy hand lettering. I've tried several different hand lettering techniques and that's what I do love about quarter planning. I use the Christmas washi obviously for the Christmas list. So we have cozy Halloween, cozy Christmas, this very neutral aesthetic. And then there are some birthdays surrounding the holidays. So we have Jeffrey's birthday and then we have Owen's in January. So I always try to make sure that those are kind of I feel like Jeffrey's birthday really kicks off the gift shopping season and then Owen's birthday closes it out. So I know that I'm completely done at that point. And then usually as soon as I'm done with holiday shopping, I'm immediately starting to look at birthday gifts and Chris, not Christmas, but, um, that's one thing too, why I kind of knock out my mom first because her birthday is 10 days before mine in March. And then we've got Mother's Day as well in that time frame. So I really try to like keep my eyes peeled and just kind of collect lots of things along the way. Because even if I see something at Christmas that I'm like, oh, that'll make a perfect birthday present. I go ahead and grab that and just kind of have it ready. Um, she was actually the first Christmas present I bought for the 2023 season and I already have it and I'm so excited because I got it super on sale. Um, so that's lovely to already have back stocked. But like I said, 
quarter four planning, super minimal, super clean. I will make a Christmas watch list and I will show that off probably in the December plan with me. Um, I do have, I actually might show it off in the November plan with me only because I do have a really strict rule about no Christmas movies until Thanksgiving is over and I do adhere to that. Halloween has, I used to like keep a lid on it and really not do the whole Halloween thing until autumn equinox and then this year has been a little bit different um and I did start a little bit earlier than intended um I think it was the whole discovery of witches thing and then I just rolled right on into interview with a vampire because I didn't know when they were going to be taken off of HBO which I found out has more to do with the strike than anything um so that was interesting but um yeah more or less I did start Halloween watching early I fully believe that I will stick to my guns about Christmas because I am very strict about that I do very much like Thanksgiving as much as any other like I really do enjoy the cooking and the gratitude and the family time and kind of being involved in that I do not like starting Christmas on like November 1st not a fan uh, I can't get behind it I'm sorry if that was a hot take trigger warning whatever um but I hope that this proved useful I think that if you take anything away from this video please take away the fact that you know I am very into efficiency and constantly evaluating my system and also being extremely realistic um in or at least trying to be as realistic as I can be with my goal setting so in the meantime I hope you guys enjoy these last couple days of September I hope fall weather is starting to surround you and I hope you're looking forward to spooky season as much as I am. I cannot wait to hear what you guys are up to so drop anything down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your movie suggestions. I would love to hear what you're doing for the season and until next time enjoy creating your own little wonderlands. Bye everyone!